OSPF, or Open Shortest Path First, is a routing protocol that you were introduced to back in your CCNA studies. And in this video course, we're going to go even deeper into our discussion of OSPF. But before we do, let's make sure that we're comfortable with the fundamentals of OSPF. OSPF is a link state routing protocol as opposed to a distance vector routing protocol like EIGRP is a distance vector routing protocol. And OSPF is an open standard. And we used to say that EIGRP was a proprietary. Cisco has now opened it up where other vendors can adopt EIGRP on their platforms. I guess only time will tell how widely accepted EIGRP is going to be with other vendors. But OSPF has always been an open standard. It's standardized by the IETF standards body. And one of the things we're going to be discussing is that OSPF can establish adjacencies with other routers. And when we say that we establish an adjacency, we're talking about a relationship between these two routers where these routers can send one another updates about network conditions. And we're going to distinguish in an upcoming video the difference between an adjacency and a neighborship. Specifically, we're going to see that an OSPF speaking router can form a neighborship with another OSPF speaking router, but not necessarily form an adjacency. That might happen if we're on an Ethernet segment and we have multiple routers on that segment. We don't have to have a full mesh of adjacencies. We'll talk about something called a designated router and a backup designated router. And those routers are going to form adjacencies with the other routers on that Ethernet segment. And if we want to, we can take a large OSPF network and divide it up into different areas. That way, every router in our topology doesn't have to know about the entire topology. We can just know about the details of the area in which we reside. And our OSPF speaking routers can send LSAs, link state advertisements, to other routers in their area. And all of the routers participating in an area should have an identical view of that area's topology. And we have several different types of LSAs. Some LSAs allow us to advertise networks in one area into another area. More on that later. But for now, just understand that information about an OSPF area comes in the form of link state updates. And by collecting these link state updates, what an OSPF speaking router can do is construct a link state database based on these LSAs. And each area's database should look identical on all of the routers participating in that area. And once a router has its link state database populated and it's able to see a map of the area, it can run an algorithm called the Dijkstra Shortest Path First Algorithm. Oftentimes we just call it the SPF or the Shortest Path First Algorithm that can find the most efficient path in terms of cost to a destination network. And we're going to see in another upcoming video that cost is a function of bandwidth. Unlike EIGRP, which by default looks at bandwidth and delay, OSPF is just going to be considering a bandwidth as it makes its calculation. And this Dijkstra algorithm is calculated for each area. So if we have a router sitting at the boundary of a couple of areas, it's got to run this Dijkstra algorithm for each of the areas. However, a router that's contained completely inside of an area only has to run the Dijkstra algorithm for that one area. And the final thing we want to talk about in this review video is how OSPF is going to attempt to inject what it considers the best path for a network into the router's IP routing table. You see, OSPF is going to populate something called the RIB, the Routing Information Base. This is a lot like the EIGRP topology table. And OSPF might say, here's the best path I know of to get to a specific network. Well, that entry in the RIB becomes a candidate to be injected into the router's IP routing table. There's no guarantee that we're going to inject a route from the OSPF RIB into the router's IP routing table, however. Remember the concept of administrative distance, the believability of a routing source. If, for example, EIGRP says, here's how to get to the 10.1.1.0/24 network, and OSPF says, here's how to get to the 10.1.1.0/24 network. Well, based on administrative distance, EIGRP would be more believable. EIGRP has an administrative distance, or an AD, of 90, while OSPF has an administrative distance of 110, so EIGRP is more believable. So the bottom line is, just because a route exists in the OSPF RIB, that's not a guarantee that it's going to be injected into the IP routing table. That route is only a candidate to be injected into the IP routing table.